This week will surely be remembered, whether it's China opening up the books and starting to spend money like there's no tomorrow, whether it's the Hezbollah leader that has been eliminated by Israel, whether it's the inflation that is falling like a rock, PCE down to levels that it hasn't been seen in years, gold hitting an all-time high, S&P hitting an all-time high. We're going to talk about everything. And of course, we're going to dive in to see what are the next challenges for the market, at least for the next week. Are you ready for it? Then let's go. Let's start and dive directly into which camera? This camera. Into where the averages ended the week. This is how they ended. NASDAQ up plus 1.1%. The RSP, the equal weighted, up 0.84. S&P up 0.62. Dow up 0.49. And the Russell down 0.56. When you look at... The major indices, you can see that materials up 3%, and on the flip side, energy down 1.7%. Part of the increase in materials is due to the news we're going to talk about, China. Let's dive into the crypto market where we see Bitcoin up 3.5% and Ethereum uh, finishing on on the week. And you can see the materials here, natural gas up 19% for the week. Uh, silver and gold up between 1.1% and 2.3%. And crude oil down 3.8%. Magnificent 7. Here they are. Tesla with, with a very strong week up 9%. NVIDIA up 4.6%. Meta up 1%. And the rest uh, are between 0 to negative 1, which is Microsoft and Amazon. If you like these kinds of weekly ideas, it would be amazing if you can subscribe to the channel and, of course, turn notifications on. And that way you'll be able to get notified every time I publish a long, a short, anything that you want to learn from. And that, of course, brings us to the major news of the week. And we will start with uh, the elimination of, Nas of uh, Hassan Nasrallah, which is the leader of Iranian-backed military group Hezbollah, a very, uh, one of the biggest terrorists today in the world. And that is a huge achievement by the Israeli Defense Forces. Uh, one bad person... Uh, less in the world. PC came in a uh, very good this um, this week. We also got the GDP, which came 3%. We saw uh, the unemployment down to, uh, actually the people that filled for unemployment down to 218 versus 224. That was expected. And China. China opens the checkbook and sends billions of billions of dollars to their economy. I want to emphasize how impactful this will be. And just let's go over the measures. One, they're, se they're uh, sending $142 billion to boost their banks. And of course, they're reducing their rates. They're uh, asking companies there to repurchase their shares, meaning that they will increase uh, in price. But when you look at the charts and the orange here represents FXI. FXI is the ETF that follows the large cap in China versus the S&P 500, which follows the large cap in the US, you can see that China, and this is COVID, didn't really surpass the COVID lows. You can see right now it's banging its head against the COVID low versus the S&P. And if we measure the S&P, the S&P from the COVID low, let's take the perfect low. No, that's not the perfect low. At this will be the perfect low and we'll do it again the perfect low the S&P is up 130 percent from the perfect low versus the FXI which isn't up at all and the Chinese do not like to see it they feel that they should do better and that's why they want to stimulate stimulate their economy they will do whatever it takes to stimulate their economy and they're doing it as we speak. So whether uh, people are long or short the Chinese stocks, they are, or China actually, the national team or whatever their name is, is doing whatever they can. You can see the inflows to their own ETFs, putting their money where their mouth is. And that, of course, created a very huge 
inflows to the Chinese stocks this week and of course to the ETFs. Does that mean you should invest or not invest? This is not financial advice. You should do your own research, but you should know that this thing is happening and it's creating or catching a lot of shorts right now in a short squeeze because they were off sides. They didn't think that it's going to happen. There was about 60% short interest on the FXI. And of course, now that money is coming in, all these shorts are being burned and they need to, of course, unwind their shorts. If they need to unwind their shorts, they need someone to buy from them. The price goes up and you know how that works. And we will keep following it because it's very, very, very interesting to see if the Chinese economy will be able or the Chinese stock market will be able to gain traction more than a few days and get back to all-time highs. And if it does, then that should be very, very, very interesting as uh, a trade. Tesla ships their one millionth car that is made in Shanghai and they export it from Shanghai. That is a huge milestone for Tesla, which had a very good week. And of course, uh, or Tuesday or Wednesday, they're going to publish their Q3 deliveries. It's a very interesting event or, or, or news. And of course, we'll talk about Tesla in a second. Eli Lilly gets a traditional FDA approval for Retevno, Retevmo. Uh, it's a cancer treatment that they have. They don't only have the GLP-1s, they have other treatments as well. Uh, Bristol Myers get their FDA approval for a schizophrenia treatment. This is also very important. B Bank, of Mon Bank of New York Mellon gets an approval from the SEC to offer a custodian on Bitcoin. Also very important for Bank of New York Mellon to show their belief in the crypto market. And PayPal gets an approval from the Chinese market for a complete payment in China. Again, part of the push for China to encourage more and more companies to become international and to open up. They're basically U-turning or reversing all their um, decisions from the last three years, something like that. And again, like I'm saying, if they're going to put their money where their mouth is, this might create a huge bull market for the Chinese stocks, which are trading, by the way, in a very, uh, which are very uh, cheap in the way they're treat, treated, traded, and also treated by the stock market. Super microcomputer, ticker SMCI, their share tumbled this week by 15% after the DOJ opened a probe against them. This is the third issue that they're having. One was the short seller report that came from Hindenburg about a month ago. Second was their inability to finish their filings to the SEC, and they're still not filing their K-10. Which, because they said they see problems with their data. And now the DOJ, that of course brings SMCI a round trip to exactly where they started the huge increase that they had and back to the same price. Southwestern, ticker LUV, they're boosting their revenue outlook while at the same time reducing their staff in Atlanta. They're closing their post there and of course letting people go. It's usually a combination of improving the top and bottom line, and that's what they're doing. Meta had a conference this week and presented their new vision, or actually their new products that are related to augmented reality. These are the high-end Orion project glasses that you can see through, get your messages there, get notifications, everything. And Meta right now is trying to figure out what would be the next phase, not only of AI, but of the personal device? What is the next thing after the iPhone? And they hope it's going to be glasses. It might be something else altogether. Warren Buffett keeps selling shares of Bank of America and reducing his stake. He's right now very close to having only 10% holdings of Bank of America. Why am I saying only 10%, which when 10% usually is a large holding? Because it means that he reduced it from, if I remember correctly, from about 18%, cutting his stake by almost 50%. And OpenAI, with a lot of news this week, OpenAI is still a private company. It's not in the equity markets, but is in, in the course of raising a money with a valuation of about $150 billion. Their CTO, Mira Murati, and two or three top researchers left this week. And the company is trying to restructure itself from a non-profit to a for-profit. A very interesting and uh, 
let's say, a, a, a path that will be learned in a lot of business schools about what OpenAI did, how they grew everything from a non-profit, not paying taxes and all that, and now becoming a for-profit. And of course, there probably also will be lawsuits around that. 10-10, October 10th in LA, we robot. These are the invitations that were sent to several people that will attend the conference. This will be the launch or at least the first presentation of Tesla around the robo taxi. Will we see a cheaper car, twenty-five to thirty thousand? Will we see the robo taxi uh, unveiled? Will we see all these things? We will know October tenth, which is uh, less than two weeks from now. Boeing uh, staff is still on strike. They were supposed to uh, come back with an answer by end of week to the last and final. I don't know of any uh, special. Uh, and any special uh, response for them, but we will probably hear from them on Monday. And this is Jamie Diamond from JP Morgan saying that geop geopolitics is getting worse. And, uh, you know, you can't say otherwise. Does that mean you need to uh, be cautious? For sure. Does that mean you shouldn't invest? Probably not, because the S&P keeps hitting all-time highs after all-time highs after all-time highs. Novo Nordisk CEO testified this week in front of the Senate about the prices of the GLP-1, the weight loss drug, uh, drugs, versus Europe, versus other co uh, countries. They grilled him, he was grilled, and, and that's how it ended. Nothing is really changing. And Visa, DOJ this week, planned to um, get them also in court for monopolizing the debit market. Those were the news of the week. Let's dive in for next week and we will start with this measurement. CNN fear and greed is being measured on an hourly basis and it shows that we are currently in a greed situation. What's a greed situation? Ask yourself, during this week, did you talk to someone about your gains? Did you complain about your uh, stocks going down? If you talked about your gains, that means we're in greed. If you talked about your stocks coming down, then we're at fear. You can answer yourself if we're in greed and fear. Greed usually doesn't mean the stocks will fall, but it does mean that you are now risking buying at higher prices than the average. That's all it says. And you need to remember that or you need to be cognizant of that getting into next week's trade. Uh, companies that are reporting because we're at the end of the cycle and before end of next end of two weeks from now when we'll get the banks uh, reporting we have Carnival Nike Levi's and a Constellation Brands that's all we have for this week not a lot of earnings earnings are done we're gonna ramp up during the second week of October as usual from a macro pers perspective. We only have on Friday non-farm payrolls and we will see is the labor market in trouble or not that might increase the rate uh, reductions in the months ahead if there are problems in the labor market and if not, it might calm down the Fed. That brings us to the S&P 500, which is represented by Japanese candlesticks. As you can see, we're at all-time high territory. The last all-time high was... 56.50. Let me pull up the S&P 500 itself and not the ETF. You can see 56.69 was the last all-time high. And during this week, we surpassed that. Right now, we had two days. You can see it by the red. Two days of selling, which might even take us back down to around 56.69. And maybe even more. And why am I saying that? Because if you're looking at the shorter-term moving averages, you can see that. And the moving averages just just taking the closing price in the last X days, depending on the line, and dividing it by the number of days. This is the 20 days moving average. You can see that we are far from it. Usually, uh, stocks tend to revert to the moving average like they did here and here and here. We are now further from the moving average than we were in the last few days, which means that we might see a pullback. Same from the 50-day and same from the 150-day moving average. All these are things that you need to expect. It doesn't mean that the market's going to crash. It just means that there might be a correction in the next few days. Uh, take the geopolitical uh, side. Take the fact that we're a month and a week before the U.S. elections and you've got yourself the recipe for turbulence in the market, volatility, and of course very interesting times. 
As usual, I will be here next week, same time, same place. If you haven't subscribed, it would be a great opportunity. By the way, there's a new Instagram account called mica.stocks.eng for English, where you can follow me on Instagram, where I post short videos of things that are going on in the market. Till next time, bye-bye.